Hold on to watch it. Yeah, uh, uh, two things. One, uh, Jimmy, did you send a picture of Frankie in for the uh, contest? That Chihuahua, you know, you know what? You were losing bad till that Chihuahua came to the court. <laughs> <laughs> he got George's army, and he was good. He was good, by the way. <laughs> That's my dog. Chris's dog got a lot Frankie. of um, Also, uh, you know, I want to just uh, make mention of uh, the Behan Strong shirts that the uh, players wore and I'm wearing now. And, uh, hopefully people scanned uh, their, their phones and, and made a contribution. Um, you know, for those of us that don't know, Pat Behan's a guy that I've known since I recruited him uh, when he was at Middlebury Academy. Um, uh, he wound up going to Bucknell. Uh, had a very good career there. Uh, he's been a high school coach in this area. He's a great guy. Uh, young guy, I think he's 36, 37 probably, and um, he's got ALS. His, his father passed away of ALS, but his dad was in his 60s, and, and uh, you know, Pat is really fighting this uh, at, at such a young age. And uh, as we know, it's a, it's a cruel, cruel disease, and the cost of uh, you know care uh, is tremendous. And so anything we can do, we've done a number. Of, you know, we, I've been a part, and they've done a number of different things with Behan Strong. I've been a part of some of them to raise awareness, raise some money. Uh, I know Pat just got home from the hospital. He's on a ventilator at his house, probably watching the game, I hope. And uh, he's actually gotten some care at GW Hospital. People in this community really need to uh, uh, to think about helping him because uh, it, it's a vicious disease. It's unfair and uh, it's happened to a great guy. And, and you know, I feel like uh, anything we can do to, to raise awareness, you know, Coach Fish from uh, William and Mary coached him uh, when he was at Bucknell, so there's a relationship there, and we thought this would be a good game to do that. So. All right, questions? Patrick. Chris, uh, just when you kind of look at the way the last few minutes ended, I know you were yeah. a bit frustrated. What, what do you feel like that might be as good a takeaway as anything for this game moving forward? Is something yeah, it's probably on me. We, we haven't spent a ton of time on press break. Um, you know, <laughs> we are, I keep saying this. It is what it is. We're, we're a younger group of guys. I got guys inbounding the ball to guys catching the ball who have never played college basketball. Another guy maybe one year. So we've got some inexperience there. I need to be a little bit more intentional about spending some time on press break. Um, uh, it just is what it is. Um, that being said, no, I, I think that's one thing to work on. I think the takeaway is, you know, one, William & Mary, give them credit. They shot the ball very, very well. 18 threes, I mean, I, they only shot 40% from the field, and but they shot 40% from threes. I actually thought our defense was good at times, not to start, but eventually we settled in for the last 25 minutes or so. We defended, I thought, very, very well. They made some difficult shots uh, outside of the beginning of the game. Uh, but I was most happy with our response. I told the guys at halftime, like, you, you don't, by the way, this is college basketball, you don't win every game by 45 points. This is more what college basketball looks like right, in a one-point game and half. Uh, and so I was very proud of our response and our resolve as a group, and we're doing it with young guys. Obviously, James, thank God we have James, we know that. Uh, but everybody else out there is, is, is you know, in learning mode, even Max, for a guy, you know, Benny, they haven't played college basketball that long. Uh, so I thought that sort of response against a team who is a good team. I mean, they, they, they thumped American, you know, two nights ago. So. A, a good a good team with some veteran guys and well coached so give them credit but I think we deserve credit for our response. Yes, yeah, you go to the stat sheet, no we would probably pick out Troy Hutchinson. I thought he might be the key of the game. He was great. Yeah. Yeah. He, got he, him. Was that to get James off the ball defensively or just to he said, he's like a, he, he's, he, he's I think defensively right as we those who have coached throughout the years you have a guy I had you know I was fortunate enough to coach Bruce Brown at Miami Another guy that comes to mind, Duran Scott, was defensive player of the year at Miami. Uh, Andre Cornelius was a guy at George Mason, was a tremendous defender. Um, I could name a few others, Kamari Murphy at Miami, but those are like Ed Reed defenders. Like, they are incredible in one-on-one -on -one coverage, but they go other places and do other things that just other guys can't do, even at, you know, he's not like a tremendously long or anything like that, but his ability to be like a defensive force even as a freshman I think is there so in a game where I felt like we needed better defense in the first eight minutes or so all of a sudden Jude Buchanan who's probably in that category as well and Jacoy come in it's nothing against anybody else but those guys raised the level of our defensive intensity 
uh, a tremendous amount allowed us to then take a lead again at half. Okay. Liam. Liam. Um, so um, Max and June claimed that they did not know that um, James Bishop, the last time you guys played William and Mary, James Bishop had a bit of an unfortunate um, ending to the game. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> anyway, I imagine that that was in his head a little bit. Um, how, like, what did you Liam, mean? tell me what happened. I don't have any idea what happened. I, don't he, know. I mean, he airballed the potential game. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes at the end of the game, they kind of like know who's going to shoot well, and they yeah, might play yeah. good defense. It <laughs> might not well, just be him airballing. I'm, I'm just wondering um, <laughs> kind of how you think he performed. Um, yeah, he was, he was awesome. I, I, I laughed at those conversations last, uh, Monday. We were like, well, is James ever going to score again? It seems like you guys got scoring for a lot of people. I was like, he was pretty good tonight. Um, you know, the guy is. Just a great basketball player. I mean, he's a great college basketball player. Uh, he's an unselfish guy. He's low maintenance. He cares. He cares about his teammates. He cares about winning. He's about all the right stuff. You know, to me, you know, he knows that he has to be a winning player to leave a great legacy here. That's what we're working towards. But if and when we do that, he goes down to me as one of the great Baltimore guards in the history of college basketball. You know, he's going to get 2,000 points. And he's going to do it in a way that is, uh, I think, people who know basketball will respect. Yeah. Only took four threes tonight. Only took four, yeah. Yeah, no, he was, he was great. Uh, co coach, you've coached, you already talked about, uh, you've coached NBA players. You've talked about Bruce Brown, and you've also coached Lonnie Walker, who, I, as you know, had one of the best performances last season in the postseason. So I, I saw your Twitter, by the way. You were yeah. very happy about that. <laughs> um, but my question is, what kind of potential do you see in like some of your younger players, like uh, Garrett Johnson? I mean, obviously, we know what his story is. ESPN yeah. even tweeted that out. So I want to see what you think. Well, I think we have a lot of guys that are going to have a chance to play basketball for money. Um, I think specifically to a guy like Garrett, you know, the first thing in the NBA is positional size. I mean, Jimmy would tell you that. Like, you know, the guy, there's there's guys that are incredible. Uh, I Coach Will Thomas at George Mason, the guy was like unbelievable. He's an NBA player, except he's 6'7". So he winds up playing the Euro League for 15 years, you know? So, you know, like positional size is critical. We have a few guys in the younger grades that do have positional size, you know, of, but you know, they're two games into their careers, you know, so it's a long, it's a long way to go. But I think you know when you look at a guy like Garrett shooting and the fact that he's six eight and he's athletic, you know, he, he's got the size to go down a path of, of playing. But I think we have a lot of guys who will play basketball professionally. Chris, the activity that Buchanan is providing for you, how significant do you think that is? Not just for a game. Yeah, he's he's like, you know, he wanted to be like Draymond Green, you know, like a great defender, a playmaking front court player. Uh, he's gotten better shooting the ball. I think there's a world while he's here that he will make threes, uh, but right now, you know, his ability to play make, uh, play with force on both ends. Um, he's the, you know, he looks like a man. He's the third youngest guy on our team, even though he redshirted Virginia Tech age wise. So you have really a young person. Who's, 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 I think, in, in the early piece of his career, part of his career here, has sort of learned what his identity needs to be and has played to that identity. And that's such a difficult thing a lot of times for young players. Nobody wants to be Ray Wing Wing, seriously, but he seems like his mind. How much does Draymond make? I, well, I would like the, to be. Besides that part of it. <laughs> yeah. The modern kid wants to shoot threes and everything, but yet he seems to have adapted his mindset, Chris. He's basically your backup five. He's been, he's been very receptive to it, and I think that's you know, good to see. Yeah, he's been great, so it's 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 good that he's done that. Matt? Um, I wanted to ask about Garrett Johnston. You had 21 points in your first game, and then after that, this story really got a lot of national attention. Yeah. Uh, ESPN, NBC, Washington here, yeah. and he followed that up with another really good game today. Yeah. Can you just talk about yeah, I'm really happy for Garrett and his family. They've been through so much. Uh, I told him the fact that, you know, like he gets 21 points is what sort of brings more attention to it, right? But the idea that you could come off nine rounds of chemotherapy, not play basketball for two and a half years, and step on the court at the Atlanta 10 level is a, is a win in itself, right? It's an incredible story in itself. I think, you know, every once in a while we make a Hollywood movie over here. Most of the time it's not. But Monday probably was, you know, it gave, gave people a chance to pay a little bit more attention. So that, that's great. But I also told him today and yesterday, I said, listen, like, don't feel like you got to do that every night. Like, you just got to get better, play well, do your job. You know, don't feel like there's any added pressure because some eyes are on you. I, I heard him get the loudest cheers 
on the introduction, you know, and, and uh, he's handled it well. He's a mature guy, and I'm just happy for him and what he's been through. Go ahead. Um, another one of your freshmen, Trey Autry, he made some great catches <coughs> um, on the court. When yeah. can you see him like translate that into shooting? And if like yeah, it's great. I did, in like our that. secret scr scrimmage, yeah, secret scrimmage, he went seven of ten from three. In our inner squad scrimmage, he went five of five from three. Uh, and then I think like maybe went like one of three or something in the other scrimmage. So he was like, you know, whatever, 15 of 19 or something in the scrimmages. And then he, I told, I said this the other day, he was so hyped up. Every shot was long in the first game. And so I'm glad that one, you know, he, he's found another one. You know, he only took three today, but I got a lot of confidence in his shooting ability. I thought he had his best offensive performance. And, you know, he's a low mistake guy. He's not high risk, high reward. He's kind of like, just make the simple, easy plays, and he'll make open ones. And he's a great, he's an old soul. He's a coach's son. He's a very mature guy for his age. So uh, I'm, I'm confident, very confident in him. Obviously, I wouldn't be starting him if I wasn't. A couple more, Liam. Um, you guys I'll you answer as many. They got so much. It's good to have all these folks here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys attempted 38 free throws today. Was that an emphasis? Like trying to get yeah, I wanted to get the ball in the paint. I thought they did a good job against America to kind of keep an American on the perimeter. American was, you know, the ball never really cracked the paint. They were switching a lot. They were trying to keep it out. You know, we just kept hammering them on the ball needs to hit the paint. We got to create some opportunities for you to do that. You have to have the discipline to get the second and third action so that we could get the ball in the paint. And, uh, you know, eventually once we got in there, they, they, I think they, you know, the game was called well. I think I got fouled. We got fouled a lot, you know. Um, one of their guys, Charlie Williams, uh, a bigger guy, but went four for seven yeah. from three. Um, and I think that that was probably part of your decision to take Akimola down or out off uh, down the stretch and yeah. kind of put in Buchanan. What do you kind of uh, think going forward about these bigger guys that can also shoot and yeah. get it and get our big guys off the ball? Yeah, well, it's like one Moss came into the game with not you know a lot of minutes in South Florida, but even within like the scrimmages for them and stuff like. Uh, the first two games, like he's a driver, he's an aggressive athletic guy. He's not a guy who's made a lot of threes in his career. He makes three threes in the first half, <laughs> right? And so we had to adjust that first. Then Williams is capable, uh, but he starts burying him. Um, that's a difficult thing for any five man that is more of a traditional. And Stretch, I think, actually can get out and, and guard in the perimeter. But his his uh, uh, nature is to be a helper. Right to, to rim protect, but he had he must have had a number of blocks and changed a lot of shots again today. But to rim protect, he can move his feet. We probably could have done a better job had we felt like Williams was going to shoot a ton of them tonight. Maybe we talked to him about that. We started switching it a little bit. Certainly having Darren come in and he can easily play out there and switch. But yeah, it's a good question. And you know, uh, I would say we went into this with the thought that they might shoot some fives, uh, threes at the five, and certainly to their credit, they shot a lot of them at the five. And so. We would have to make that adjustment a little bit uh, going forward, but it's early in the season. After all your years in the Colonial, which is now the Coastal, do you think William and Eric can make a run in that league? If they make an 18 threes a game, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I like their group. I mean, you know, Hofstra's another one coming in this week. They're really good. Um, again, I, I thought they did a nice job. I thought we did a good job of sort of like saying, okay, the game is going a certain way. We need to change the way the game is going. We did that mid first half throughout. Um, I know this is something you were also asked about last game, but William and Mary had 12 offensive rebounds. Do you yeah. think we only had four? Is that something that you're going to try to emphasize? Yeah, you know, we are, and we're not getting enough of them on the offensive glass. And we're going to have to look at why. Um, we are emphasizing guys crashing, and it's, it's something that we need to fix. And then I thought they did a good job. Three's rebound long, but also, like, for the second game in a row, I told them I felt like we were not the physical team to start the game. Now, we were the physical team as the game wore on, but not to start the game, and that's that's a little disappointing right now. So I think it comes with the growth of your group to, to understand that. Uh, you, le you limited William and Mary to under 10 free throws, so could you talk a little bit about your defensive focus without fouling towards the end? Yeah, I thought we tried to do a good job with our verticality. I thought Jacoy had a couple of impressive plays. I thought Stretch being able to come over and help. Um, you know, we made plenty of mistakes, but again, I, I thought a reasonably good defensive game after the first 10 minutes and trying not to foul. And, and they're, again, they're a difficult team with the way they play. Uh, it's, it's abnormal, you know, to be honest. With five out stuff. 
talk, they're, they're like havoc and pressure in the final two minutes of the game. You made that game a lot closer than yeah. it should have been. How do, you, how do you tighten that up and what's kind of the emphasis on that? Yeah, I just, I, I think we got to do, um, we got to do, again, a little bit better job of, of, of working on some of those press break situations, catching it. Um, it's a little funny, I have James taking it out because last year there were some times where he got trapped. He wants to get fouled. He, tra he gets trapped. He holds it, holds it, holds it. They so I'm like, all right, James, why don't you take it out? We'll throw it to somebody else. He'll you step in, we'll get it back to you. You know, so that didn't work great today either. So I'm, I'm running out of like places to put him that makes sense. But no, I, I think it's just experience. You know, I think Darren's a guy you could see. He's got great hands. Like you could find a five man on him where he can break to catch it. And then he, he might be the guy to catch it. So we'll just work on some of these things. It's, it's, it's fine. Uh, uh, not a question, but I uh, just want to congrats, uh, congratulations on the extension. Thank you. Glad and McCall to be here. Well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? All right.